Our speaker today is Alistair Price of the TREE Foundation, and the title of his talk is going to be The Future of Finding Meaningful Work. Alistair Price is currently the president and CEO of a nonprofit, the ERS Training and Development Center. ERS is focused on helping Anglophones and Allophones on the island of Montreal find meaningful work by teaching personal development, language, technology, and job search skills for the post-COVID environment. Prior to joining ERS, Alistair worked in human resources and senior and strategic roles with Air Canada, Aeroplan, the Inotech Exec Air Aviation Group and Sky Regional Airlines, as well as coaching and instructing at McGill University and through his own business, Authentic People Solutions. Throughout his career, Alistair has developed an expertise in helping people of all ages, backgrounds, and work experience move forward and find meaningful work. Welcome, Alistair. Thank you for joining us, and we're very much looking forward to your talk. Great, and thank you so much for, for having me and uh, for, for making the time. And what I'm going to do is just uh, share my screen, uh, a little a short presentation. And I'm just wondering, can you see that by any chance, the, uh, the PowerPoint, is that, does that come up for you? We, yes? Yes. Okay, one, one fantastic. So what I'm going to do is put it in, into presenter view here. And, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thrilled to be here because it's something that I wanted to, I wanted to share uh, with many people. And Tom Burpee uh, kindly reached out to me a few months ago and said, you know, he's, he's on our board, full disclosure, and said, look, would you be willing to sort of share uh, what you do, uh, what uh, ERS does? And I also want to clear up a little bit of confusion with, with Tree Foundation and how that all um, comes together with ERS before I start. So just um, some context. Uh, Tree Foundation is a foundation that's been around uh, for approximately um, 100 years, actually, when you when you pull all together, because there's also Boys Farm. Um, if you know, if I've heard of many, you've probably heard of Shawbridge Boys Farm. And uh, probably about, I'm going to say about 35 years ago, ERS was founded, but Boys Farm um, was part of uh, the Shawbridge um, Foundation. And when that split, um, they sold the land. Um, I'm going to say about, uh, about 96, when it was sort of formally sold. Um, proceeds went in, in, into half into Tree Foundation, and the others went to, I would say, to the bat shop. And so this is where Tree Foundation is a major supporter of the ERS Training Development um, Corporation. So that's how it's all linked. And what um, ERS does uh, of that is, is very much focused on helping people uh, find meaningful work. So ERS has been around for 35 years. Um, I'm very recent on the, on the, on the job. Um, I'm very excited to be here because my predecessor, Peter Clement, was the um, president and CEO for 35 years with ERS and saw a number of uh, variations in helping people find, uh, find work. And so really the focus of today's talk, and I'm really interested in also hearing your insights as well at the end in the, in the question and answer is, about helping people find uh, the future of meaningful work. And I think that you know, where, where we sort of need to start is we actually need to start with what we mean by work and what we traditionally meant by work and also what work is going to look like going forward, okay? So traditionally when we say work, and this is how I, I grew up with work, my, I talked to my father the other day when I said, you know, define work. Um, I've even, um, and this is what's very interesting about my son who's about to turn 18, I've asked him what he means by work. But traditionally, when we look at work, and this is just a, a, a definition and there's, and there's many ways we can look at it, but one is your education and skills meet opportunities and you deliver value. And I put in parentheses and you are remunerated, right? So typically we're thinking of work that you're gonna get paid, right? And that's sort of, again, that's where we all, I mean, many of us, grew up that way. Um, but that doesn't actually take into account another thing, which is the fact that we may be doing volunteer work. Like today, it's, call it work, you call it play, but it's, it's work. You're not necessarily being remunerated from a cash standpoint, but you may have something inside of you feeling very uh, joyful because you're giving back to your community. And um, that's where I think even with the Rotary Club and, and, and my, my sister uh, went on an exchange, it was the Rotary Club of Ottawa many, many years ago to Brazil. 
And for her, um, it was very much life-changing. And um, why, why I look at that particular opportunity for her is it was to, to study and, the, and she went down there and she helped out and did some volunteer work, but it was life-changing. And, um, and this is where I talk about education and skills, sort of got her in there. Um, and she was able to go and deliver what I call some, some, some value to her. We also had a host in an exchange family as well from, from our certain family, an exchange student, pardon me, from Spain, which we very much enjoyed as well. So it's, it's something that when we talk about work, it's not always remunerated, right? It's volunteer, it's about giving back, it's about giving sort of a, a value, right? But often with work, and this is where the word meaningful comes in, the future of meaningful work is it's where there's some sort of purpose aligns with our values. And traditionally, when, uh, you know, growing up and my experience in work is, well, I just need to get paid. I need to be doing something. I need to go to school. I put my skills and I go in there and, you know, I make some money, uh, but I've really never asked myself, um, you know, and I'm going to say until you mature and you get through it, um, you have many jobs, if you like, um, what work really is. Does it align with our values? Is it sort of meaningful or are we just going through the drudgery every day um, and, and finding work? Right. Um, that also then begs the next question I had is, is what is a career in 2022? Because I think this is another question what we're faced sort of uh, now. And we can call it post COVID because that's fine. We've all we're all sharing an experience. that has been very challenging to uh, to too many of us. Um, but what is a career? And I think what's changed with a career is it used to be and I'm going to get the traditional ask my father the same thing. Well, career. Um, he, you know, uh, went to university, he got a job, he was an accountant, he was a successful accountant with the, with the Treasury Board in Ottawa, um, you know, enjoyed it, it was, but that was it, that was his, it was experience with the government. Um, the next thing you ask career, you ask myself what a career is. Well, my career um, has been very much sort of disrupted by events. You know, I sort of joined the workforce around uh, the late, late 90s. And uh, that's where Red, uh, you know, thank you very much, Susan. But, you know, it's the started Air Canada, you know, you're, you're there. And then I moved on a great opportunity to Aeroplan. And I'm not sure about uh, restructuring. And then I went to Enotech Exec Air, where I was, you know, head of HR for Enotech Exec Air, restructuring. And then I opened up my own, uh, you know, my business. Uh, I did some, some teaching at McGill. And what I'm saying is, is the career, as you can see, is changing. It's not the sort of this lifetime, different things, different skills having the ability to, to, to adapt. And I think when we look at a career in 2022, um, I'm gonna add a little bit more to this is, you know, for someone starting out, they're expecting to have many different jobs. But here's the other thing that I think is interesting about a career is the question, and I put it here, is do we ever retire? Like what is retirement, right? And so here's a question I have for you and even a show with hands. Some of you may be, uh, you know, retired, but have you actually stopped working? Have you actually stopped working? You know, and, and when you're working, am I going to define this again too? There's the paid part, but here's where I'm going to the answer to you're all here today, volunteering your time, helping out with the causes. So effectively, you are working, if you like, but hopefully it's meaningful, right? And I think that's a really important piece to, to sort of continue. And I think what I want to shift it to is about the thing of traditional methods of finding work, okay? Uh, a candidate employer. And so this is getting closer to the business that, that I'm in with, with the IRS. But the traditional thing, what we see with people finding work now at all, all ages, to be quite frank, the traditional method is, you know, you have your current skills and ability to do the job. That's the focus when you're applying on that. You're coming at an employer say, well, this is what I can do. These are my skills, my ability to do, do the job. You put your cover letter, your CV and your cover letter, you know, is very much focused on who you are, what you do and, and the value you can add, okay? The traditional methods of applying for these, these jobs are by, or used to be by mail, fax, online. Um, known to me and to many others is what's called the post and pray strategy where you just send it in and you hope someone will pick it up. Um, if you're a little more proactive, you speak to people you know and you network, okay? And basically it's referrals, and you're sort of in the, in the door. From an employer focus, um, in organization, we're looking for people's skills, ability to do the job, and a little bit of fit, okay? And, and that can be very, uh, very sort of subjective, what we mean by fit. You know, I, I like, 
I like so-and-so, so you know what, I think this would be great. I think there's a great opportunity for them. Um, then I asked this piece, you know, what's the satisfaction retention rate, right? And when you look at the, at, at the data, and I didn't want to put a whole bunch of charts today, but the, the, the reality is it's very much sort of a hit and miss. Okay, so traditionally we get through our careers. I mean, oh, my, my father, he had his ups and downs in the government. He just stuck it out. That was the thing to do. Did he, was, he, was, he, was he happy? No, oh, it was all right. It was, a, it was a job, you know? There were some good times. There were not some good times. Um, but traditionally, this, this strategy, look at, look at the data. Um, many people right now, 75% of people um, are not happy in their jobs and looking basically to change, right? So there's not a lot of satisfaction in that. Um, they don't find a lot of meaning in what they in what they do, right? Then we look at where, and it's something I've been very interested in, and that we're really focusing on on an ERS is the practices for finding meaningful work. What's out there in the market, and why this is important is because you look at candidates. I look at my 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 son and my daughter. And she's she's getting she's turned sixteen, so she's getting into that workforce piece, and it's interesting because their focus and what they're looking for is, is, is very different, right? They're looking things that uh, relate to their values, what they, what they sort of believe in. So we've heard about, you know, environmental, um, uh, you know, stewardship. Uh, we've heard about things like community, um, but they're also very concerned about the fit to the organization. Can I be my authentic self? Do I, you know, they've heard of all the horror stories and organizations and, and, uh, uh, and being treated basically poorly. And it's not something they're particularly interested in, right? Um, when we talk about brand, we're talking about um, very much into the, the value the person's bringing to the job. What is it they feel they're not only very good at, but they're known for? And it's something that they want to develop. So often you'll often hear brand, their strengths, okay? So for instance, if you're a very good marketing professional and but you're very good at particular, maybe you're good at very good, good at online marketing. They want to have opportunities that very much focus on that. Okay. And the other thing is, will I learn and grow in my career? Grow in my career, I should have there. Okay. That's a really important piece. They're looking at, they're knowing that they're not going to be there for, um, for, for necessarily for a long time. They're looking in many ways that, so look, I'm going to go in. I'm going, I'm hoping that I can, again, build my brand, feel like there's a fit in the organization. If it works out, great. If not, I'm going to move on to do something else, okay? The world of the work now is very much social media driven. So LinkedIn, um, very important. Um, as we're doing right now, we're on video. I wanted to bring that piece as well up. The video, for instance, Zoom, uh, interviews are now done over, over, over Zoom. Well, it's the first screening. Um, so people are very comfortable in that type of piece. Networking becomes really important in finding the work. And why the networking, and I say informational interviews, is often candidates before accepting a job want to meet with people. They want to talk to people and say, well, what's it like to work here? Or what's it like to be you know, an account? What's it like to work in the service industry? Uh, that's a very important piece. It's very much an active strategy, candidate-driven strategy that's out on, on the market, okay? On the employer focus, and I'm going to address because there, there is a, a, a um, an elephant in the room when I say this uh, with the with the employer focus. What I'm saying is, do their values, brand, and skills work with the organization? That has you know that's what's up on the on the posters on the wall. Uh, that's what we want to do. We want to have a a good fit. Um, you know, for us, it's made a lot of a lot of time spent on what's called employer branding. You know, what we do, what we do well to attract talent. Okay. Um, just you know what the elephant in the room is, is the fact that we're in a market where, where employees are desperate for uh, employees. So in some ways, it's like, hey, that's nice if we get the fit, but quite frankly, we just need people that, to work for us. So I, wanna, I really want to stress that. But my point being is in the market, when you have the candidates out there that are looking for work, they're very much trying to align themselves with uh, the brands of, uh, of an employer, right? Does this, this, does this work for me? Do I believe in what this organization does, okay? But here's the other thing too, that's also important for employers, for those that out there that employ people, is it's about, can you help this candidate grow? Because if you want to retain them, right? If you want them to stay for a while, you want them to develop and continue to add value, they need to feel that there's a setup, there's an opportunity for them to grow. And this doesn't necessarily mean sending them off on, on, on courses. Uh, 
what it's more traditionally about is do they, do, do, you know, do you care about them? And are you willing to mentor them? Are you willing to give them opportunities where they can use their skills and learn and possibly fail, but still learn? And that's a really important thing to, to consider uh, in this type of uh, you know, environment and market. Now, pulling this all together, I wanna to talk about ERS and, and, and the work that we've done for, for uh, 35 years, 36 years, but also how we're pivoting because obviously COVID um, has had a tremendous impact on our, on our not-for-profit. So you can think of classes that were full of, of 16 participants, okay? Um, at a time, we were turning out probably close to 100 people a year because there was, um, and, and again, we were helping them find, uh, find work. COVID hits, uh, participation goes uh, right down, obviously, because uh, people can't work into workplaces. Um, the other piece that also tended tend to happen as well was what's the value we're bringing? Our programs tend to be very long, right? They tended to be programs that went for, uh, you know, 20 weeks, 22 weeks. And the also point is with the focus, the focus tended to be very much on a traditional piece on just on skills and not on the skills that are needed in the, in, in the current 2022 environment. Okay. So, what we've done and what we're doing right now is really aligning. I'm going to focus on, on the mission because I think that's an important piece. Is about helping people find meaningful work by empowering participants with job search, language, technical literacy, and personal development skills. And when I break this down, um, because I just talk a lot about job search, how you do it, but we like to, you know, when, when we step back in the market, we have to understand where, and I, I mentioned at the bottom of the current target market, but Anglophones and Allophones, is how do we integrate them into the market? So if you ask me about the Montreal job market, it is very much, um, many of it's, it's in French, but here's what I also appreciate with, with being in French. There's a respect, I find, for the Anglophones and Allophones if you make the efforts in French, because there is really much a market, of, well, listen, I don't speak any French, so I can't get a job. Well, that's not, that's to me is not the case because we'd be very successful with it. What is the importance is that they have um, an interest in connecting with people, right, in French. And why I mentioned the Anglophones and Allophones on the island of Montreal who are structurally unemployed is because we're really targeted on those that have been long-term unemployed, those that have been um, out of work for a significant period of time. A lot of what we're seeing is those that have very low confidence, that have um, skills that if they invested a bit of time in, they can actually do it. And um, you know, participants that don't have the networks, don't have the courage to explore the networks, to reach out to, to find that work. And so what they would rather do is in some ways, they're just, they're just scared. Quite frankly, they're scared to get into the environment because they're scared about if people will accept them. And so that's the work that we are trying to do with ERS is start with them and say, well, what's meaningful for you? Like, what are you looking for in a work environment? What are your skills? So what, what are you lacking? So I'll, I'll, and I'll give an example. We'll have people that will come in and that they might have, um, you know, basic language skills. And I'm going to start on that English in this as well as too, because that's the other thing we often forget with some of the immigrants. They may they come here and, and English and French is not even their first, second, or, or third language, right? But giving them those basic skills and, and, and allowing them to get some confidence in that so they can use the other skills that they've acquired to reach out to various employers to, you know, to, to find work, okay? Um, the technical literacy. And this is a really big one because I, I used to struggle this with HR as well. We used to hire people, but they were scared of computers. They were scared of, um, so it's not you know, what we call the office suite, just they were scared of technology. And the reality is, is that we are in a, very much in a wired world. I mean, we're online right now on Zoom. And two years ago, uh, many of you are like, okay, I probably don't know how to figure this out. Well, you're here today. You figured it out. You, you, you can do it. And often, that's what we also have with participants. They don't have either access to it or they don't have um, you know, knowledge of how to, to, to use these basics. So that's what we sort of provide. And 
when I look at the success of what we're, we're able to do, it's we are able to help people find that meaningful work, align the field they want to be in. Okay. The other other success rate is there is they is they graduate over our program now. It's a 12-week program with the ability to put the basic computer skills. So they've gone up a level with the basic uh, you know, language skills where they've got the confidence. Um, the personal development skills, this is, talks about you know, confidence. It talks about diversity and inclusion. Um, often, another thing too, is some of our participants come with some really uh, strong preconceived notions about other people, right? So sometimes we need to break those barriers down and say, you know, in Quebec, you know, it's an inclusive society. And maybe if you need to look at it a different way, that, you know, but with, with opportunity that we, you know, we're not here to discriminate, um, that this is how you deal with conflicts. This is how you may deal with differences of opinions. Um, you know, focus a lot on what I call collaboration skills, right? So being able to move things forward. Um, and by the way, that's a lot we heard from employers as well when they were, were with, our, with our candidates. A very key skill is, you know, collaboration. So it's very much a focus on helping people move forward meeting them where they're at and move forward. So our current uh, method of, of recruitment, because this is also how we've had to, to change how we find, um, find candidates, is we're reaching out very much to community centers, right? Community centers where there are people who are there, they may be there because they need you know, housing, they may be there because they need even some with, with, with food because our, our market, I should, I should I, our target market traditionally is those on, I call an employability scale of, of zero to eight, okay? But if you're at the really low end of the market, they might be on, on, might be on welfare, right? They might be on welfare. Um, they, you know, they, they're traditionally at a center somewhere. They may not even be going through the government. That's the other thing we're finding, right? Right now is that, you know, the uh, Selvis Quebec that does sponsor um, one of our programs uh, has basically said to us, they said, you know, listen, uh, we don't know. You're going to have to really go out and try to recruit and find where these where these people are, right? And so we're doing a lot of work with community organizations. Uh, we're very much focused on, again on meeting people where they're at, uh, basically assessing their skills, assessing everything, their skills, their values, what they need to do, and then training them, developing them over a 12 week, a maximum 12 week, because we do have people that graduate before that and find jobs and helping them integrate uh, with employers. So we also reach out to employers as well that are, are willing to say, look, you know what? Uh, we have some opportunities here. So uh, that is, is very much the focus. Um, I'll end a little bit with this, a, a success story because here's, here's the power of, of some of the work we do. So um, there was a gentleman um, last, last year, at the end of last year, he was a former, um, I'm gonna say uh, from uh, Sri Lanka, and he was formally assigned um, as a diplomat, uh, high commissioner, if you like, and deputy high commissioner to the UK, right? So Sir Lankin, and he um, struggled when he moved here uh, with, his, with, with his family to, to find work. And part of his, his challenges were obviously the French and some of the English and communication skills. And by working with them, with the coaching, with the courses that we had offered, um, he was able to find work. He actually had to, had to move to, uh, to, to Ottawa, but he was able to find work uh, in Ottawa. And I should also me mention too, he was a lawyer. That was his background as far as a skill set, right? And I think what really struck me was he said, this is the first organization that I felt had my back. Met me where I was at, and was able to bring me up, bring up my confidence and help me move forward. And just, you know, he'd been in, the, in, in, in Canada for, for four years. And the other testament with it as well that I think is really powerful is uh, he's referred uh, a number of people from his community to our organization. And I find that to be the most rewarding part of the work. Of all, everything I've done, that I find is what the most rewarding piece is. Um, and it reflects on like the employees, it reflects, I think on the board as well, because that's the other piece to, to, as we do this work, um, very, very dedicated, uh, board members that have really helped, um, shepherd, you know, the, the organization over the last 35 years, but also for the fact of saying, you know what, we need to grow this for the future. So 
the, the, the thought that I want to leave you with is there is help out there for people in any walks of life that need help finding meaningful work, okay, that are, that are, that are unemployed, um, but have had a hard time finding work because uh, we have an organization that has the skills, um, uh, with the courses, and I'm going to say too, also the coaches and the employees who, who know what it takes to help people move forward. And uh, so thank you so much for your time. I just wanted to share that message with you and, and actually open up the floor to have any, any questions because there's many thoughts I've shared here, but I'd love to hear your, your, your feedback. So thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Um, shall we stop the share screen? I shall do that right away. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, so we are open for questions. Does anyone have a question? We're all muted, so I cannot. Yeah, I have one. Go ahead. Um, pretty practical. How do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> How do we get paid at ERS? Very simple. Well, it, it, it's a combination of uh, government. So Selby's Quebec does, does provide it, as well as the, is the general donations from, from Tree Foundation. So it's a combination of how to, because I'll tell you why I like the question, because it's about sustainability, right? The traditional yeah. employment programs of being what I call feast or famine. Um, and why I'll give this example is um, uh, well, a number of, of organization member executives available. When I was there, it was 100% focused on, on government. You know, you, you find people work, you get paid, you don't, that's the end. Well, I find the foundation has enabled um, ERS to live in a mindset of, okay, focus on, on your mission and your vision, and we'll make sure that you can attract and retain the right people to be successful. So that's where it's been really, uh, it's been wonderful to be quite frank. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, part two of that. So the people that you find work for, uh, they are not required to sort of pay a commission or uh, a certain percentage, say for the first year of work, something like that. No, they, they, they do not. Not uh, Now, you also, Beg on a very interesting question as well, too, is they're not, they don't have the means, first of all. I mean, some of the employment we're getting is at the very, the very low levels, but that's also a model. That's something I'll be looking at as, as you move up the scale um, of how you might be able to, um, to help people find work. So I'll, I'll share it very openly. An example would be there's a lot of people doing part-time work. So they're working right now. They're, they're really miserable. Um, would they be willing to pay something to uh, help them uh, find work? No, and, and I think there is a market out for that. And we would certainly open up a program. I'm certainly looking at that right now um, because I think that's a, that's a growing market. Thank you. Uh, Humam has a question and his question is, is there an age limitation for candidates? There is no age limitation except you have to be over 18 because that's mm. the, only, the only one, uh, but there isn't. But um, I'll also have this piece as well too. It's uh, when we talk about the sort of sweet spot where I see the real need, because it's also, you can't be everything to everybody. So that's that be with the ages of 30, usually or to about 55 is where we find a majority of our, uh, of our participants. And that's what we're sort of targeting right now. Um, to be able to help with the programs. But there's no, I mean, we have, have a, right now we have someone who's 72 in our program. So um, that's where, where it's not. Again, it's about finding meaningful work and, and their focus may be somewhat paid, also may be very much uh, volunteer. That's where we're here to help. Thank you. Mm. Any other questions? Um, yeah, Alistair, could you give me what Tree Foundation is your complete, uh, you know, what it stands for? The Tree, T-R-E-E. -E. You know what? That is a very good piece as well, because I think it's also with a number. So that I do not know tree. I know ERS uh, is employment readiness skills. Yeah. And here's another thing, uh, Ron, we, we bring is very interesting is this is where I've walked into a, a branding piece, right? Because one thing we have employment readiness skills, and that's another piece on, on the agenda is how do we actually rebrand this? Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about branding and meaningful work. <laughs> it's the same thing because you're, mm -hmm. you're right. So um, I don't know what tree the exact uh, the exact piece, but ERS is employment readiness skills. And by the way, it took me a while to have that one as well too. I remember with the board, they had to, mm -hmm. to look it up. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes. Well, uh, how do you get around the you know people needing to know French uh, when you're dealing with people who are mostly anglophones or allophones? Obviously, uh, uh, some jobs require a lot more French than others, and I think the the way around it, some jobs require a lot more French than others. But I think what it is is it's being but being realistic with the candidates um, okay. and where and where they're starting from, right? And what I found is I'm gonna flip around the opposite. A lot of people think like they have to have French to even get a job. And I think that's what I wanted to say as well, is that's not the case. I think the, the case is what I've experienced in many of the workplaces I have is an appreciation for French, that you're willing to learn French. That to me is what the breakthrough mm -hmm. is, right? And I also think too, when you look at our, the, the population as well, that's what I'm saying with, with, with Anglophones, um, we've got my generation, um, we're bilingual, we have an appreciation, or mm -hmm. if we're not a bilingual, there's at least an appreciation for it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think if you start them at that level, um, it is gonna bode well for them. And there's a lot of employers out there who say, look, they're, they're making efforts in French, um, let's, let's bring them on board, right? And I think that's, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the approach, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Any other questions? I have a question, Alistair, about ageism. Uh, yes. do, do you see it among employers? And if you do, is there a category of employment where you will see it more? So the issue, uh, so a great, great question, by the way. Uh, so yes, there is ageism. I'm not going to sit here and, and say uh, that, that there's not, right? Um, and a lot of the techniques that we use in job search, like on people's resume. So here's a, here's a, here's a tip. Um, don't put, don't, don't put your, your address. Don't put the date that you graduated from your university. You know, if it's not within 15 years, don't put it on there. It's mm -hmm. not a requirement. Okay. Cause that at least can get you. Um, the other thought I have on ages, mm -hmm. ageism as well is, uh, if you're working for an employer that believes in discriminating its age, it's, uh, I wouldn't want to work there in the first place because there's a lot bigger problems. Um, mm. The other piece is what are the categories that, that it's in or the jobs that you see it? Um, person, I think, I think it's, it, it, it's everywhere, right? But I've also want to say to flip this side is not, I've met many, many other companies that really don't care. They're, they're desperate for workers. And if the focus on the value you can add, then I, then I, I tell you, that's what you need to focus on, right? So, um, and that's our candidates. They are finding it. I mean, uh, again, this, this gentleman from uh, Sri Lanka, I mean, he was 68, I believe, around that age. Yeah. And he found work. You know, he went through and says, the value of Canada. I've got all this wisdom. I have a legal background. I write really well. You know, I struggle a little bit. Yes, in, in French and even my English maybe, but, you know, he, he adapted and, and that's where he's been able to find work. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so I think to me, that's, that's it's, it's, it's a mindset is what I'm trying to say. It's a mindset. And um, agents exist. And if someone's going to discriminate, uh, we tell our candidate, then just move on. It's not, it's not worth that, not worth that battle. And because there's lots of other people out there, we'd be happy to have you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. I do have another question, unless there's someone else that wants to jump in with a question. Uh, my next one is about, uh, we're going to have a wider audience than this when we, when we put the video on Facebook. So if you could just say something about the desperation of employers right now to get work and how that's related to COVID. Okay. Well, I think the, the desperation for employers is um, related to the, the fact that some of these businesses out of COVID have pivoted and they're, and they're, and they're growing. Uh, however, the challenge for attracting people is the fact that um, there's a, a skill disconnect and the skill disconnect is, is profound, and especially in Quebec. And what needs to happen is employers need to be prepared to uh, train, but they need to also be prepared to accept people that may not have all the skills required. So an example would be, let's say French, right? So the point is, if someone's willing to learn French, they may be more, they should be open to, uh, you know, bringing that person on board if they have the other skills that are required for the, uh, for the job. Um, the other thing that's going to be important too for employers is, and it's all over the web now, is your reviews, right? So people want to know before they join your organization. Um, so those that, that you know, don't have work or don't feel a need to work, am I going to be valued there, 
right? And if, if your organization has a reputation of being, you know, driving people too hard and not being a, you know, a, a, you know, a good place to work, um, it's going to be very difficult for certain employers. So, um, and it's a challenge. And but but you're seeing, and you know, a friend of mine in a, an organization that's doing really well said, "Listen, if you treat people well and you have your reputation, there's no shortage of labor. He's mm. he's he's finding people very easily, right?" And other organizations that have had a bad reputation, don't treat people well or burning people out. Well, you know what? They're likely, and then this is my strategy hat for McGill on, um, they're likely to um, be in a lot of trouble and quite frankly, go out of business, right? Mm. So that's, um, that's the reality. Okay, thank you. No other questions? Well, then I have the pleasure of thanking you, Alistair. This was wonderful. Thank you for giving us sharing of your time and your expertise. Um, you are uh, maybe a best kept secret. So we're really glad that you came on here to show us what you do and, um, and add such value to people's lives because meaningful work is, um, I think it adds to um, general satisfaction with life. So thank you so much. We appreciate your, uh, your time. Great. We'll end Great. the recording. Great.